Jim Talent, a senior fellow over at the Bipartisan Policy Center, former senator of Missouri, and a terrific guy. Hello, Jim. Welcome back to the Hugh Hewitt Show. By the way, but of course, we're not going to say that our off-air conversations are better than my on-air interviews with you. We can't say oh, no, that. We, we, no, we, no, we can't say that. That would, be, that would be totally wrong and inappropriate. We can't do that. Right. Uh, so, Jim, I don't know if you were listening the last segment. I played a lot of the testimony from House Foreign Affairs, which was finally looking into the debacle, the catastrophe that was the Afghan withdrawal. Lots of very powerful testimony, lots of testimony there to just make you angry. You know, the, the, the testimony of the sniper that had the terrorists, the, the bomber in the sights, and he identified it. He knew the threat. He identified the threat. He went up the chain of command and said, I can take this sucker down right now. Just give me the go. And he couldn't get it. Jim, I, 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 I'm not naive enough to think that the hearing is going to give the justice that we want. But is it at least going to give information and closure to the people that were impacted the most by this debacle? Well, yeah, I think it has that value. I mean, the truth always has value. It's what Redfield said in an earlier clip, that what we really need is the truth here. But what we've needed for the last two years is accountability. Uh, And look, we can talk about the basic decision of of whether we should or shouldn't have left Afghanistan. I was not persuaded that we should have. But the whole thing was a chaotic debacle. And what the committee is going to find, I'm certain, is that there was no effective plan. And the responsibility for that, I think, rests in the National Security Council. Nobody's ever, I don't think anybody's ever been fired over this. If you're not going to fire see, that's, somebody that's, over this. That's what's maddening to me is no head rolled over this thing. They just glossed over it and said, oh, it was a smashing success. How many How many people died and got left behind, uh, Jim? It's it's outrageous to claim it's a success. I don't know by, by what measure you can claim that. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't like to use the word gaslighting, but that's gaslighting. And what should have happened was yeah. when the president made a decision that he was going to leave, Jake Sullivan of the National Security Council should have got all the agencies together and said, look, we're going to come up with a plan. He should have head it to make sure they did come up with a plan to protect American interests and equity, which included, as you say, getting out Americans, identifying the Afghans we wanted to get out, make sure we get them out. And also, by the way, and the Trump's people would have done it, this way. You're right. I mean, if if he had decided to leave, leave in such a manner that if something happens where the president wants to change his mind or delay, you have options that we would have options. And it was not there. Uh, There there was the only agency on the ground that planned, in my opinion, was the Department of Defense. And they were told to get down to a certain number and they were told to do it a certain way. And they did it. And nobody else, nobody else was doing their job. I mean, you got to laugh or cry. I, 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 I really shouldn't laugh about something like this. And then that the statement that we're going to have, and, and this is absolutely right. I mean, uh, I heard for years when I was in office from Vietnam veterans who were struggling with the way we left that country. And we're yep. going to get the same thing you know, for years and years to come. For years for years to come. The, the, the emotional damage that was done to that whole cohort, cohort of people that served, it's, it's, we haven't begun to realize the damage that has, that has done, the toll that has taken. I want to shift to another. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I want to shift to another, uh, before we run out of time, a uh, piece in the Washington Post this morning by Missy Ryan. In race to arm Ukraine, the U.S. now faces cracks in its manufacturing might. The industrial complex. We've talked about this dozens of times, Jim Talent. I'm, I'm great with arming Ukraine and, and helping, helping them do the fight against Russia, but I'm worried about completely emptying the stores and oh, yeah. having to face China's. What, what do we, Washington, how are we going to fix this? The Washington Post is discovering that our defense industrial base is not adequate. Oh, right. I, I, I know that. I mean, Trump ordered, in, uh, I think it was in his first year, I wrote a column about it, uh, the first real thorough review of our defense in, industrial base since Eisenhower. And of course, it reported what we all knew, which is Gallagher's talked about this a lot. We can't yep. even produce basic precision guided munition quickly. I mean, there are aspects of that production line that have like a three year long lead aspect to them. 
Okay, and we're, we have not stockpiled the stuff that we need. So no, you know, we're not ready. And that makes it difficult for us to support Ukraine or Taiwan in the event the balloon goes up there. Real, so, real well, quick, real quick. Biden's budget is DOA. It's not even news to report he has a budget. The Republicans are going to come out with their budget, but somewhere in the compromise, somewhere in the final budget that happens, if we have one this year, are we going to have money to help beef up the industrial complex? Yeah, I feel pretty confident that that money's going to be there. There's very strong good. bipartisan support. Good, good, good. Jim Talon of the Bipartisan Policy Center, thank you very much.